So the Biden family was on a Instagram live stream with soccer star Megan Rapino yesterday, and they had a particularly cringeworthy moment that actually says a little bit about their politics. Let's take a listen. There they are. Hi. How are you? Oh, yes. Megan, how, how are you? We have them. Good to see you. Yes. Hey, look, I dyed my hair purple. I dyed my hair purple. Can you see it? In I solidarity for pay equity. Uh, I love and, that. And you don't have purple hair anymore. Can we, can we, can Honey, we? this hair is like two months into COVID, and it is doing its own thing, and it has its own mind. Well, I, I actually hope this washes out. <laughs> yeah, it will. It does. Okay. So there it is. She dyed her hair uh, purple in solidarity with pay equity. I don't actually know what that means, um, is that, but I is think... Is that a real thing? I, I it might be. I don't uh, know. I'm just not maybe, aware of it. Maybe I should dye my hair purple. I mean, I feel like if we just all dyed our hair purple, then for sure we'd have pay Right, equity. so that was the thing. I was like, <laughs> why don't we all just dye our hair purple, and then everyone will have equal pay, because that's how that works. Um, in, anyway. It looks cute, <laughs> though. I kind of like it. I do. I, I, thought it, I thought it was perfect, and I wanted to show it to you in particular, because it, that is how so much of the way that people think about these things. It's like, I will have a token piece of activism or like a button or something. Yeah, it's virtue signal. But fine, okay, like what What in the Biden platform guarantees this? Does that actually exist? I don't see anything. Yeah, no, I mean, it's all it's all virtue signaling. That's exactly. what the whole party is collapsed down to at, at best, right? That's like at its finest <laughs> moment. It bothers to even virtue signal. Uh -huh. There's also like, I don't know, I'm so, I'm so grossed out by like the fandom yes. around different politicians. Like, oh my God, it's like, Queen, you're so amazing. All that stuff, like so giddy. There was a gross moment between um, Sam B and Kamala Harris that also evoked similar cringiness. Let's take a look at that. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I know that running for vice president must um, be a very full schedule for you. Oh, Samantha. Honestly, what? I so seriously, mm -hmm. my head is so not fair. Honestly, okay. my head is so not there. But I do have a follow-up question. How are you going to balance being the VP, but also being the Attorney General? <laughs> I want that so bad. So bad. <laughs> and by the way, of course, yeah. she didn't ask her any questions about no. like, hey, you know, you really were out there more than anyone of all the like people that Biden is considering for VP. Kamala Harris really made a name for herself mm -hmm. during the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, was way out front on all of that. Now she says she believes Joe. She stands with Joe. Tara Reid is a liar, et cetera. She didn't say that, but she that's certainly the implication. Yeah. Um, not one question about that. Instead, just like fangirling about, oh my God. Yeah, it's a real What if you were the interview. prosecutor of the nation? Because that was so great for people when you were <laughs> doing that in California. I mean, that's this is perfect. This is the perfect. I mean, full frontal. Samantha B's whole thing was like being a woman in your face, asking the tough questions, going after Ivanka Trump and all that stuff, um, on a champion of women's issues. What happens with Kamala Harris? Fangirl moment, not talking about Joe Biden and any of these uh, assault accusations. In fact, the word Biden was not mentioned once in that entire thing. And it's just, again, it just goes to show you this like elite Hollywood celebrity um, fandom around the Biden campaign just represents so much of what the party is becoming on a cultural level that is signal like dyeing your hair purple for pay equity, fangirling over Kamala Harris's <laughs> attorney general prosecut prosecutorial record, right. which I thought was supposed to be a bad thing um, in the Democratic Party. It's just it just goes to show you that they're just much more excited over virtue signaling over like, oh, it's a it could be a woman vice president. Right. And look, I mean, on the one hand, you could be like, CMB is a comedian, you know, she's an entertainer, you know, shouldn't have to expect right. her to like ask the hard questions. But to your point, her brand is like speaking truth to power and, you know, challenging power on behalf of women. So it's not an unreasonable expectation to think that you might apply that on both sides of the aisle. Um, but, you know, we it's not like we haven't seen the same sort of fangirling on MSNBC with Nicole Wallace. I mean, any any of these so-called journalists do essentially the same thing, um, sometimes in a less slightly embarrassing way. But um, it's essentially this. I, I, there's been this just like people have forgotten that these are 
people in power who you are supposed to challenge. Like you're supposed, exactly. it's supposed to be adverse. They're not supposed to be in the club with you. These aren't supposed to be your buddies and your friends that you like want to hang out with and who you're, you know, melting down over because you're so excited to talk to them. These are people who, by the way, are making mass, or like put Biden and Tar Reid aside, like are making massive decisions and huge errors during this crisis from which, you know, the, the nation may never be the same because of the path that they've set us on. It's a really serious moment. And to just not really go there at all, I just think when you have those opportunities, you have to take them. Yeah, it's embarrassing. And but well, worse, it's revealing because it's what you pointed at. It's their same social set. Nicole Wallace and all of this is all part of an elite media social set of which has its own values and they have to protect each other at all costs. And that includes right now, former Vice President Joe Biden. And that is just I mean, this is what is going to be the entire campaign throughout this of that all of that Hollywood energy and support that they possibly can bring along with MSNBC playing defense. Indeed. Yeah. All right. We'll have more. Oh, next week on Rising, journalist Zed Jelani, he's going to tell us what stories that he has his eyes on. And Democratic candidate for Iowa's 4th District, J.D. Schulten, he's running against Steve King. He's going to describe the coronavirus crisis in Iowa's meat processing facilities. Let me tell you, J.D., you should go follow him on Twitter right now because he has been all over rural issues, agricultural issues, and in particular, the coronavirus crisis and how it is impacting meat processing. So check him out this weekend and check that interview out next week. As always, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll have plenty of great interviews for you over the weekend. And of course, we'll be answering your questions on Rise and Cues and picking some great highlights of the week. Everybody enjoy your weekend. We'll see you back here soon. See you next week.